good morning students welcome back to online classes of vlsi design today we are going to see the topic of seema's fabrication process before going to the topic we'll just revise what was our last topic we have discussed about your seema's fabrication in your last topic i hope you remember what was there in your seema's fabrication process we have seen what are the different kinds of uh, terminologies we have to use when you are going to take a pure silicon crystal yes so what is the uh, which uh, type of material we are using we are using a pure silicon crystal which is a group 4 material to that we are adding some impurities which grows your sister, which grows your crystal the uh, and the dimensions which we have to consider whenever you are considering a silicon crystal sir the diameter should be of your 75 to 150 mm in diameter and 0.4 mm that is your what is the thickness of your silicon crystal and the impurities that are to be doped for growing your crystals are boron impurities whose value should be 10 to the power of 15 cm cube to the 10 to the power of 16 cm cube and it should be having the resistivity of 2 to 25 ohms yes so these were the requirements that we have seen for growing a pure silicon crystal so last class we have seen of how we are going to prepare a nmos transistor nothing but your nmos fabrication process that was the last topic now in today's class we are going to see how we are going to prepare a cmos transistor or a cmos fabrication which is very very important see what is meant by cmos transistor ma it is nothing but you are integrating both nmos transistor as well as pmos transistor nothing but combination of your both the transistors nmos as well as the pmos on a single chip substrate so on a single chip you have to prepare both what you have to prepare nmos as well as the pmos means you have to fabricate it both nmos as well as the pmos so as the cmos fabrication has to be done there are three technologies that are used first one is n well technology second one is p well technology and third one is twin tip or twin well technology so as to prepare this one this what is meant by n well p well or twin tip is there actually twin well or twin tip technology how we will do that one we'll see in the next slides so these are the three fabrication process which are consider or which are used in your cmos fabrication first one is n well p well and twin tip so n well and p well will be similar technologies i'll teach you today in today's class i'll go for the p well fabrication process how we are going to see or n well fabrication in today's class we'll see n well fabrication process okay let's get started with that one so before going to that one what we are going to see for integrating this nmos and as well as pmos devices on a single chip or a single crystal or a single substrate some special regions that has to be developed and that particular regions are called as your wells or tubs okay that particular regions are called as your wells or tubs a p wells in last class i have already told for preparing an nmos transistor which substrate should be there in your crystal p substrate so when you are going to prepare a pmos transistor n substrate should be there opposite vice versa ma you remember this one wherever you are going to prepare a nmos transistor there should be a p substrate when you are going to prepare a p transistor pmos transistor either you should be a n substrate so what you are doing we are combining both nmos as well as the pmos so what i will do instead of having one substrate then i'll be adding one more well to that substrate a particular well so that is called as your well the region we we are adding here for combining both nmos and pmos transistor a particular region which is we are adding that is called as your well so a p well will be created for n substrate and an n well will be created for the p substrate if you are creating an n well means p type transistor will be obtained and if you are creating a p well means nmos transistor will be obtained so these are called as a special regions which are used to make on a single substrate to prepare a cmos transistor because we are combining or integrating both nmos as well as the pmos transistors i hope you are clear with this introduction part we'll see step by step how we are doing all these steps or the very first step what is the very first step you have to take a pure silicon crystal to that you are adding some impurities right boron impurities with the particular directions which i have revised in this today's class also okay to that one first what we are going to see we are choosing a substrate based on the fabrication which kind of for which fabrication we are doing right so for a n well a p type silicon substrate is to be selected as i have said today i am going to discuss about a n well sorry p well process 
okay so, uh, n well process for a n well process which kind of substrate should be there here we already i should be having p substrate if i am going to see the p well process then i should be having an n substrate over here so this to this silicon crystal i will be adding a p substrate means this p impurities i have to add which kind of impurities whatever the dimensions i have given that impurities has to be added means that boron impurities of that particular dimensions that are to be added and that should be of p substrate so to as i am discussing today about n well process so p substrate is to be added here the very first step is you have to add p substrate to your pure silicon crystal next step is oxidation process you remember what is oxidation process nothing but laying or depositing a silicon dioxide layer on to the surface of your p substrate or a silicon substrate yes or not so we are what you are doing silicon dioxide is laid out by oxidation process which is done by exposing the substrate to the high quality oxygen and hydrogen okay in an oxidation chamber which is approximately will be the degree and the temperature will be of 1000 degree centigrade so this is the one we are doing the oxidation process what is oxidation nothing but laying a silicon dioxide layer on your p substrate okay why we are going for this one because it will act as an barrier ma which protects the prote which protects your complete wafer against any containment of the substrate because any no not mixing up uh, not mixing up with other substrate so that's the reason we are going with this oxidation process how this oxidation process will be done that will be done in a particular oxidation chamber who by imposing or exposing this whole substrate to the high quality oxygen and hydrogen with a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade okay that was your second step third step is growing the photoresist layer now you have to grow a complete photoresist layer onto your silicon dioxide layer first you have done with the p substrate first step second step is you are you have to layer deposit a oxidation layer nothing but sio2 layer then third is your photoresist layer what do you know what is a photoresist layer it is nothing but a light sensitive polymer which softens when it is exposed to the light we are with to which light we are exposing over here to the uv light whenever you are uh, showing this to the light it becomes softens uh, that part becomes softens okay so that's the reason we are using a photoresist layer the part which is not uh, exposed to the light that becomes soft and which is exposed to the light that becomes hard that is called as your photoresist layer so at this stage to permit the selective etching etching means you have to remove that particular part and you have to uh, what you'll say uh, you have to add the n and p impurities impurities to that one so as to create your source and drain right so that one what you are doing we are adding a photoresist layer called uh, onto them and this process is called as your photolithography process okay now what you have to do the fourth step you have to expose it to the uv light for getting polymerized as i have told in the last class itself what is meant by polymerizing nothing but hardening the layer uh, the uh, the mass which is laid over here only these parts become softens as we have said in the photoresist layer it is a slight sensitive polymer that is that will be hardened when it is exposed to the light and with the mask which is masked over here that will be softened so we, as we are uh, what we are exposing it to the uv rays this particular part which is exposed that will become hardened and this part which is masked that will becomes softens right so what you have to do now we have to remove this photoresist layer from here means removal of unexposed photoresist layer so i am removing this particular photoresist layer the mask is removed and the unexposed region of your photoresist layer will be dissolved this is your fifth step now what you have to do you have to itch itching nothing but you know what is the meaning of itch so what i'll do i'll remove this oxide layer oxidation nothing but your silicon dioxide layer also is removed why we are removing because we have to add the dopants over here because we are preparing a cmos as well as the pmos transistor cmos fabrication is nothing but combination of nmos and pmos both we have to prepare if it is a p substrate to which kind of kind of transistor will be obtained i can prepare a nmos transistor here so i have to prepare pmos transistor also to so which substrate they have to have so a n substrate so as to get that one what we are doing particular diffusions have to be done dopants has to be added we are removing this oxide also 
how we are removing after removing this particular one what we have to do the wafer is immersed in an etching solution called as hydrofluoric acid which removes the oxide from the areas where we have to add the dopants or in which the dopants are to be diffused so all this complete substrate is immersed in a hydrofluoric acid which removes your oxide layer this is the step 6 etching this is how it will be shown okay now removal of whole photoresist layer during this etching process those portions of silicon dioxide which are protected by photoresist layer are not affected what it means whenever the portions of silicon dioxide which are protected by photoresist layer means this part where you had photoresist layer when it when we are having the photoresist layer it was exposed to the uv rays after that we have removed that photoresist layer but why we are protecting this one so the portions of silicon dioxide which are protected by the photoresist layer are not affected when we have immersed that one what the complete substrate has immersed and here we have removed the silicon dioxide layer as to diffuse the dopants i hope you are clear ma'am i'll repeat it once again first we are exposing i'm repeating it from the step 4 you are exposing it to the uv rays where you get the polymerized means the part which is exposed to the uv rays that are polymerized hardened okay after that what we are doing only this part is removed photoresist layer will be removed okay and this uh, where you are not masked that also will be photoresist also be removed then you are going for the itching process why we are going for the itching process because we have to remove this particular part for adding or doping the dopants and this oxide layer will be safe it won't disturb because it is already polymerized so it is protected by the photoresist layer which is not affect does not affect your silicon dioxide layer now to this one you are adding the formation of your n well it here step 8 now we have to add the n well i think now you are clear how we are doing this is called as your n well fabrication process we had p well fabrication process n well fabrication process and twin tap process is there for the preparation of your which kind of transistor cmos transistor right so here now we are what we are doing we are dumping or diffusing the n type impurities so as to get the n well so the n type impurities are diffused into the p substrate through the exposed region that is forming a p well now it is clear oxide layer which is safe after uh, exposing it to uv rays this part we have removed it completely because we are doping or diffusing your n impurities so if you are having the n well process because means here you can prepare a p transistor here you can prepare a n mos transistor so combination of this both on a single substrate it is called as your cmos cmos transistor so this is called a cmos fabrication now see well now what you will do will completely after adding that n well now the layer of silicon dioxide is completely removed by using your hydrofluoric acid by using this hydrofluoric acid the silicon dioxide is completely removed now we have only two substrates one is p substrate to that we are having n well means here you are having complete n impurities means you can prepare a pmos transistor over here here you are having a p substrate that means you can prepare a n mos transistor over here so combination of n and p makes your cmos transistor now the same process you have to repeat correct so as to prepare a gate what we are going to add over here we are having a thin layer of gate oxide now this is very important so what you have to see now uh, after all this you got n well and you got p substrate the very first thing is you have to prepare gate terminal because when it is very important to prepare the gate terminal very first before preparing the source and drain because the misalignment of the gate of cmos transistor what actually happens means it it gives you unwanted capacitance so because of this unwanted capacitance the whole circuit will be in uh, that could give uh, or that will be what will say that will harm your complete circuit whenever your unwanted capacitance comes under or it becomes higher or lower the complete circuits is in your harm condition means it is in dangerous condition so as to prevent that one self alignment gate process is to be done first so for very first what you have to do so before preparing your source and gate terminal itself we have to prepare the gate region 
so it is preferred where gate regions are formed before the formation of your sores and grain using the ion implantation implantation is nothing but you are uh, diffusing you are doping nothing but you are doping your sores and grain impurities into that one so what is the very important why we are going for the uh, polysilicon layer for the preparing of the gate terminal because this leads to the unwanted capacitance which could harm your complete circuit so as to avoid that one we have to protect our circuit so what we have to do very firstly we have to align our gate terminal first after that we should go for the source and drain correct so this can be done by the process called as your chemical vapor deposition it means the process which is used to deposit a thin layer of gate oxide here you see here this is called as chemical vapor deposition method where it will be depositing a very thin layer of your gate oxide on to that one you add a polysilicon which gives you a gate terminal here see this is your silicon dioxide what we had first one thin a gate oxide on to the thin gate oxide we are adding a polysilicon this polysilicon gives you a gate terminals so these are the formation of your gate regions this is a gate region for your pmos transistor this is the gate region for your nmos transistors except the two regions required for the formation of the gate for nmos and pmos transistor other remaining portions what are the remaining portion this part is there no ma this will be stripped out means this will be removed what we have to remove thin uh, oxide Here we have to remove thin gate oxide and the polysilicon. They both has to be removed because we are preparing only gate terminal. First gate terminal is done, then it is okay. Now we can go for the, your circuit is in not in harm condition because first first very first part of preparing the gate is done. Now what we have to do? Now we have to go for the process for getting your source and drain yes for getting the source and drain what you have to do you have to do the oxidation process again the process repeats you remember in fabrication or nmos fabrication process isn't it or not after preparing the gate terminal again what you have to do you have to add the oxide silicon dioxide layer okay then again photoresist layer then it again it is uh, exposed to the uv rays again you have to itch the process isn't it or not so here also the same process will be repeated an oxidation layer is deposited over the wafer which acts as a shield for both diffusion and metallization process diffusion means why we are going for the diffusion for getting the source and drain terminals where we have to add or diffuse the impurities based on your transistor if you are going for the p type transistor so we have to add p impurities and if you are going for the nmos transistor we have to add or diffuse the n impurities and metallization process we a layer of metal has to be deposited onto the wafer as to get the interconnections between your terminals okay now see what we have seen masking and diffusing the same thing again if silicon dioxide layer is the line then photoresist layer will be laid then it is exposed to the uv rays then afterwards after masking you will be removing itching these parts why these parts the very first the part we are what we are doing here n type of impurities are used for this one in this particular gaps what which kind of impurities we are adding n type i'll show in the last slides why we are uh, having three gaps over here okay for making the regions for diffusion these regions we have to prepare uh, in simple words we have to prepare the some space for getting your source and drain to that we have to add the impurities which impurities for preparing nmos transistors n impurities also only we have to add so n type of impurities using masking process small gaps are made and masking process is done for getting these gaps so three gaps i am having over here see here using the diffusion process three n impurities or three regions are developed for the formation of your n terminals for the nmos transistor so here you got a p substrate which is used to develop a nmos transistor for getting the gate we are using a thin oxide layer and a polysilicon you got the gate terminal you got source and drain by adding the n impurities over here here also we are adding the m impurities for getting the base this i'll show in the last slide you remember i think for the cmos vdd and vss are very important okay that is ground voltage and your source voltage supply voltage for that the reason we are using this one also okay 
Now we got the n MOS transistor over n impurities we have added. We got n MOS transistor. To this well now we have to get the p MOS transistor also. Yes or no? So we have to add p impurities. So what is the next step we will be doing? Same. Correct. You or you have to do the same oxidation layer and photoresistor layer, masking, exposing it to the UV rays, and you have to get the areas where you are going to diffuse your P impurities. Here, see here, we got only N impurities. Correct. This is your NMOS transistor has to prepare for P C MOS. You have to integrate both P NMOS and P MOS. So where is P MOS? Here. You are imposing diffusing the P impurity. So removing the oxide layer and similarly to that N type diffusion for forming the terminals of your PMOS transistor by P type diffusions are carried out. So I am uh, carrying out your P diffusions over here. So it is a P transistor, it is a NMOS transistor, combination is total is called as your CMOS transistor. Yes, so this is this completely gives you a CMOS transistor. Now we go, you will get a doubt why we are having the base here. Okay, you are having extra things. I will show in this one. Now after this, what you have to get? You got transistors, everything. Now you, are, you have to get some uh, interconnections or not. So for that one, what we have to do? Before forming the metal layers, first we have to make the cuts. Yes or no? So for getting that cuts, again you have to do the same process. Laying of thick field oxide you have to do. So before forming the metal terminals, a thick field of oxide is laid out to form a protective layer for the region of the wafer where no terminals are required. Other than you have, you have to make the cuts and the holes, then you have to add the layer of silicon dioxide for making this terminal very protective so that no other terminals are required other than this one and it, it is completely safe so as to protect your overall circuit lastly after getting your PMOS and NMOS transistor we are having a layer of your which oxide ma? field oxide thick field oxide nothing but silicon dioxide only so a complete silicon dioxide layer is laid onto your terminal see this part this is called as your laying of your thick field oxide layer which is done before metal terminals are deposited. Now see after this one what you have to do we have protected our uh, what we will say PMOS and NMOS transistors because we don't need any other terminals. We got source, we got drain, we got gate okay three terminals are, are there so we have to protect we don't want any kind of extra diffusions or extra terminals so we have to stop how we will stop how we will protect or save our complete substrate by laying a silicon dioxide thick layer silicon dioxide layer will be deposited before metallization after laying this complete silicon dioxide layer now we have to go for the metallization process means a complete layer of metal is to be deposited onto the substrate so which material you are using which metal is nothing but your aluminium metal of thickness 1 micrometer thickness of aluminium metal layer should be deposited onto the substrate see here this part this step is used for formation of metal terminals which will provide interconnections between them yes now see this is the removal of your excess metals okay here you will be getting your interconnections. This excess metal is removed from the wafer and the caps which are formed used for your interconnections. So these are used for the interconnections. I hope you are clear. What were the steps? Very first step is if you are considering for the N well process. The same process will be repeated for the P well. So what, which substrate you have to consider there? Here you have to consider N substrate. The well will be your P, sub, P well should be there and here you have to add N impurities then here you will be adding your P impurities because, because you are integrating both NMOS transistor as well as the PMOS transistor. In the steps again the three steps will be com completely repeating mark. your oxide layers then your photoresistor layer and masking and exposing it to the UV rays. Okay? For gate terminal you have to use the gate oxide layer and a polysilicon layer okay that process is called as your chemical vaporization ch chemical vapor deposition process okay so after that you'll be getting the interconnections of all this now i'll show this is your complete cmos transistor i'll show how it will be looking the last step is assigning the terminal names 
okay names are assigned to the terminals of the nmos as well as your pmos transistor how we are going to assign c this is your cmos transistor this is combination of your pmos transistor and nmos transistor as well as your pmos transistor combination use your cmos transistor yes or no so what we have to run i'll completely tell you you have prepared gate drain source gate drain source but extra basis we are having because this is the vdd this is the supply voltage you have to get where is your supply voltage here this is the part where you are getting the supply voltage for your pmos okay this is your supply voltage where is the vss this here we are getting this vss that is your ground see always keep in mind the supply voltage was 5 volts in the year of 1980s okay in 1980s the supply voltage vdd was 5 volts now it has been decreased because whenever you are having the high voltage the pro the power will not be uh, saved it uh, means it consumes lots of power extra power or more power was used at that times now as a terminology or the technology has been increasing then from that time the vdd value has been decreased it has been from like a 3.3 now 2.5 1.8 now some nowadays we are also using 1.0 or less than that one also so your supply voltage it should be less so lower or the less vdd value saves your power so for the consumption less consumption of power the vdd value should be less okay only if initially at the vlsi time or initial days very initial it was for starting it was 7 something volts then afterwards in 1980s it become 5 volts and after that it is completely started decreasing decreasing because the technology has been started increasing so So the VDD value is nearly one or one point five something. Now we are using. Okay, this is your VDD value, this part, and this is your VSS value. We have to get the inputs from where you are getting the inputs from the gate terminals of your both the transistor PMOS as well as the NMOS. So here are the gate terminals. I have attached this one. I am showing. This is the V in nothing but input voltage, and you are getting the output voltage from the drain and the source part of your two terminals here. This part, my V out. So I have combined here. I am shown here. This is the V out. So this is how your complete CMOS transistor will be prepared. This is the process called as your N well fabrication because I have used a N well over here. If I use a P well over here, then it is called as a P well fabrication process. So with the, for preparing a CMOS transistor, we are having three technologies which are called as N well fabrication, P well fabrication, and twin tap process okay today we have seen the n well fabrication similarly p well fabrication will also be the same all the process will be going on the same part okay instead of that one we have to start over here with the n substrate to the pure silicon crystal you have to add the n substrate and the well which you are going to use your p well whichever the wells you are using that is called as your p well fabrication or n well fabrication i hope you are clear with the today's class of cmos fabrication process in case if you are having any kinds of doubts ma please let me know and tell me whether you are getting or not so vlsi is very very interesting subject it's not too hard very interesting you can easily grasp all the points and it is very useful for your future also so i hope to today's class is very clear okay so this is the part we have seen n well as well as the p well fabrication process in next class we'll see the twin tap process now i think you have me might get know what is the idea of twin tap process also okay so once again i'll just revise what is cmos fabrication fabrication we have seen as in the last class itself we have seen the nmos fabrication you have to fabricate you have to prepare the transistors so cmos is nothing but the combination of both your nmos and pmos transistor so you have to add you have to integrate both on a, say, a single chip single silicon crystal so first i'll take a pn substrate or p substrate and i'll prepare a separate region for preparing one more transistor that particular regions are called as your wells or tubs 
that's the reason we are called so here i am using a n well which for getting a p mos transistor if i use a p well over here i'll get a n mos transistor and the same process of repeating for getting the gate drain source you have to repeat and get the uh, terminals of all the transistors i hope you are clear if I, if there are any doubts please let me know for today's class will end up to here okay thank you